voices uh, <laughs> uh, well that voice is from first of all I have to say a woman that I love very much she is one of the sweetest people that I have ever met and one of the funniest um, you will know her from her iconic role uh, as big Rosie Greenbaum on Laverne and Shirley Miss Carol Ita White. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, hey, hello. David. Hey, Carol. Hope you're well. I'm well. I'm well. I'm keeping. Uh, I'm keeping. Uh, keeping your house. young at. Keeping what? In the house. Oh yeah, me too. But you are encouraging your young actors, though you may be locked in the house for now. Yes. Lachaim. I am. And what does that mean? To life. life. So, yes. happy, happy, happy. Good, so good to see your face. Oh, it's good to see yours. I, and we, I'm, I'm so glad. This is our first real Zoom together since we've been in quarantine. Since we've been engaged. I forgot about that. Still single. <laughs> I love. <laughs> case any of your students might still single. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, I can't wait till you come back to Performing Arts Studio West when the quarantine is over. Oh, I just can't wait to meet your students. I've seen them on YouTube. Yes. They're, They're so, so talented, so full of life, so, so castable, so delightful. I, <laughs> I tell you, it's so true. I mean, and Emmy winners and series that run for five years and right? the list goes on you know yeah. and singers and dancers and we love you p-a-s-w mm -hmm. right so miss white yes sir um i have, what was your first movie oh the first yeah. movie that you were ever in for my very first movie, mm -hmm. believe it or not, was with Barbara Streisand. Mm -hmm. It was called Up the Sandbox. And I played, this was whoo, 1974. Ah! Before most of your students were born, I would suspect anyway. I was a young actor, like the gang in your group, and I get a call from my agent. Go over to Fox, meet Sis Corman, and audition for, she was a casting director, unless it was Marion Doherty. I don't remember. <laughs> but either way, they're, bo they're both huge casting directors, huge, like the biggest in the business. So I go over yeah. and I learn my lines. I play Bernice Spittlemeister, the babysitter. Barbara and her husband were going to a party and I have my school books with me. I knock on the door. Oh, I got the part, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the casting person said, I'm going to have you back to meet the director. She showed me a picture of the girl who they liked who lived in New York. Mm. But here they were going to shoot it in L.A. And I live in L.A. So right. next time I came in looking like myself. But, you know. So I miss Spittlemeister coming to babysit with my books and my chemistry in hand, and I knock on the door, on Barbara Streisand's door, her character. Yeah. 
<laughs> I was so nervous. I was nervous. Barbara Streisand opens the door and oh, she says, uh, come in, Miss Spittlemeister, here, come, come, just, I was so nervous. She says, come in, Miss Spittlemeister. I closed the door behind me, slam, all the pictures on the wall fell off. Cut! Oh, Oh, I thought, you know, call Central Casting and get another Miss Spittlemeister here who knows what she's doing. Oh, that was the, uh, the wall support, not you. Well, the, the prop guy said, oh, it happens all the time. But it was like, I slammed the door. All the pictures came off the walls. They should have kept that in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. So, but that was like the greatest thrill to work with her. I had seen her in Funny Girl in New York, of course, and I was ah oh, the biggest fan. And I had to do a nude scene in this movie. Oh yes. And it was like, I'm thinking to myself, nude scene, nude scene. Well, it's a Barbara Streisand movie. And so it's not going to be, you know, ooh, you know, scary. But you did see my right breast in the movie. When she comes home from the party with her husband, she opens her bedroom door. There I am sitting on my, having sex with my chemistry partner. And right, right, right. I think, yeah, so. And that was your first, mo I mean, your first movie, that you're doing a nude movie. scene in a Streisand film. <laughs> Couldn't hurt. I know it can. Two things about that. Number one, yes. um, was the first time that you met her when you opened that door in the scene or before? Actually, no. Um, I met her during lunch. She, uh, she had a big trailer on the set, like, you know, a mobile home in the stage, on the stage. And she called for me to come in her dressing room while she was eating her lunch. Yeah. She said, she says something like, does your mother know you're gonna take your clothes off? <laughs> and I, you know, I can't do an imitation of her, but I said, yes, and she's terribly excited, hoping <laughs> that perhaps I'd find a husband, but still no. And that was only how many years ago? 50 years ago or something? 72, was it? Uh, 70. It was 74. Oh, 74. And, yeah, 74. So that was a few, you know, a few days ago anyway. Oh, yeah. But that is, so she couldn't have been sweeter. Oh. And every time I'd see her after I finished that project, I'd see her driving around town and her license plate would be BJS. And so I'd know it was her. Barb, I think Joan is her middle name or something like yeah, Barbara yeah, Jones. Yeah, yeah. She'd drive around with her, her name on her license plate, and I'd honk, she'd wave, you know, Miss Spittlemeister, hello. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> yes, love it. she couldn't have been kinder. Couldn't well, have I have to kinder. say, that's one of my favorite movies of all time, I, you know, in my top 10. So, and it's so, f I love it. I love coming to, you know, when I got to Hollywood, I was sort of like, <gasps> for the first year, and then I finally eased into it, you know? And then, you know, I, I met you, and, and then after a while, I found out you were in that movie, and I went, oh, my God! <laughs> so I was like, it was great. It was very, it was very exciting. Very it was exciting. great. Now, you, you of course, I'm going I'm to throw out a name. Okay. Actually, I have a couple names to throw out, but I'm going to throw out the name Gary Marshall. And what would you like me to do with that name? <laughs> when did you feet first meet Mr. Gary Marshall? And, and how did you become a working relationship with him? Because you did many things with him. Many, 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 many. God rest his soul, let me say that first. Oh, he was amazing. So, Gary Marshall's partner, writing partner, was a man named Jerry Belson. 
He was his partner in The Odd Couple. He was his partner in many movies they did together. But this was a movie for television. And Jerry Belson, Gary's partner, his sister, was my best friend. Monica Johnson was her name. And Penny Marshall and Carol White. It was all our first projects on TV. Can you imagine that? This was before the Barbara Streisand movie. Right. And it was a TV movie called Evil Roy Slade. Wait till you hear who's starring in it. John Aston, Dick Sean, Milton Berle, oh Mickey Rooney. It was a Western. <laughs> And I played, my character's name is Homely Girl in Bank. So Penny was in it. It was her first job. Monica, Jerry's sister, it was her first job. John Aston, he's a bad guy, he comes into the bank with a mask on like we all wear now. And he goes around and he kisses all the girls and he gets to me changes his mind, uh, doesn't give me a kiss. What did I care? I got my union card. I got in with Gary Marshall and Jerry Belson. Gary Marshall then used me twice on the Odd Couple show. And of course, on da 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 Lover and Shirley. Can you see it or is it backwards? No, it's gorgeous. And here's me right here. That's you. And here's another me. But interesting thing, Laverne and Shirley comes on mid-season. It's when they brought new shows on in mid-season. Right. And I wasn't big Rosie Greenbaum then. I was raunchy girl in bank <laughs> wait a minute raunchy girl in bank. you played is, in bank several times then this is my thing homely girl in bank raunchy girl in bank and i get in this episode Laverne i have to pause for a second because you are anything but homely so i don't <laughs> I, I don't get that but anyway well, i'll tell you compared to you know Typical, in those days, there were no fat actresses, mm. really. There, you know, there were the glamorous actresses. And in everything I worked in, the stars were always those glamorous, glamorous. actresses. So they, and listen, as long as they paid me, as long as I could do my thing and get a few laughs, see myself on the screen and join the union and get paid and get residuals. I didn't care what they called me, you know. Okay. But the first Laverne and Shirley show I did, I wasn't Big Rosie. I was raunchy girl in bank. She, she and Shirley go on a date to a pool hall. And this was with the, Ivan was my boyfriend, big nasty Ivan. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, Laverne, I say, you know, I, I was like really tough. And me and Penny get into a fight, you know, I'm going to rip that L right off of your chest kind of a thing. And they make their escape. They run around. I open the door. There they are again. Anyway, Gary Marshall, who I will always be grateful to. He liked that Laverne had someone to fight with. That wasn't Shirley. You know, she, Laverne and Shirley could pal up against the enemy. Mm. But they brought me back next season as Big Rosie Greenbaum, Bimbo with the Bucks. My character marries a rich proctologist. <laughs> he follows his dream anyway. Uh, and... You know, I'm always flashing my credit cards and my furs and, you know, I'm just a big bimbo like they, I'm as big a bimbo as they are, but I called them, you know, mm. the mayor wouldn't dine with, a bim with bimbos like you. 
da 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 you know, anyway, so me and Laverne were meeting up and fighting, but I'll tell you, from when I did the raunchy girl and yeah. uh, got in the first fight with Laverne, I went, when they said I was going to come back as a character, I lost 25 pounds, and I'm thin, and I'm... <laughs> I don't know if you could see me here. Yeah. 117 pounds. I get there and the customer said, well, uh, Gary was, he liked you big and he'd like you to wear padding like a fat suit. Oh. I started to cry. This is my huge break and I have to wear a fat suit. Anyway, I didn't have to wear a fat suit. I said, she, she's she got a big attitude. Yeah. She doesn't need, you know, extra poundage, as it were. So that was so much fun. Oh, my God. And what a family that you, I mean, throughout the years, you, you kept friends with all these wonderful people. Yeah, yeah. They were, uh, it was a great crowd. Uh, whenever I see David Lander, Michael, or Cindy Williams, so sweet. Uh, God rest Phil Foster. And I, I believe Betty Garrett is gone too, if I'm not mistaken. If you're alive, Betty, yes! And if you're <laughs> gone, God rest your soul. <laughs> I, th this is what I love about you, is your sense of humor about life and love. And also, I love that coffee mug. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, I've taken a painting of all things. Yes. Yeah, taken a painting. And it's kept me calm during this pandemic. Yeah. 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 But I'm also out with my sign protesting. Very Black, nice. With Black your Black with your mask on, right? You know, I've got my mask right here, so when I go out. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh. You can that's what I always say to people. Cover your nose too, you silly people. Cover your nose. Cover your nose. Um I mean you went on to do classic TV, Love American Style. Mary oh, that was, that was before Laverne and Shirley. Oh, that, of course. I mean, I grew up l loving that as well. And then you did Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. And then, of course, Starsky and Hutch. I love that episode. Wasn't it two oh, episodes? You know what? That was, um, I actually was in the pilot of Starsky and Hutch. And then they had me back few years later after they were a big smash hit already right. um and it was murder at sea oh speaking of which it was called murder at sea here i am skinny and that's richard hack he wrote for the hollywood reporter and he's carrying his mother's urn she always wanted to go on a cruise but Anyway, it was <laughs> Jose Ferrer was in it, and of course, Starsky and Hutch. Let me think, Ed Begley Jr. was in it, and just all kind of people. I did a tap dance, I played oh, I played Bertha Zelinka, Tops and Taps in the talent show. I did a tap dance, yeah, yeah, but pl playing my mother was Kay Medford, who played on Broadway with Barbara Streisand in Funny, Funny Girl, Girl, played her mother. And so, and I actually did a Love American style with her, and oh, God rest her soul, she was great. So she and I were taking a cruise to find me a man. Not that I'm obsessed with that, but <laughs> she and I, played mother and daughter, and it was a pleasure. And then all the people that were on the cruise that were so, they, oh, 
we they flew us to Hawaii mm, nice. and then we took a cruise back to San Francisco and filmed it on the cruise and it wasn't the exact pilot for the love boat but it was the pilot before the pilot for the the show the love boat oh wow yeah another oh, Aaron Spelling show as was Starsky and Hutch anyway the people on the cruise they were so kind to me. They said, what can we do to help your career? I said, write a little note to Freddie Silverman, the president of ABC, and say, give Carol White a show. And you know what? They wrote, and they wrote, and they wrote. And then Gary Marshall had me do Raunchy Girl, and then right after the very first show I did as Rosie, yeah. he ordered me my own show. And as show business goes and things get twisted and kind of nasty, that show became Angie with Donna Pesco. Donna oh. Pascal, whom I love. She yes, was she fabulous was. as Angie, but Angie was actually Rosie. And, wow, and so, so it started as that. That's oh, right. I that, never that, knew that story. I mean, we've had Donna's come to teach too. She's, she's an extraordinary girl and so gifted. I call her a girl because she's at least two years younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, she's it's, wonderful. It, oh, she's amazing. And it's interesting how you are describing all these people that you kept on running into. I mean, it's yeah. it's a small t uh, town. It's a small it business. It's a small town and a small business. And in fact, Gary Marshall and Jerry Belson, who gave me my first job on TV in Evil Roy Slade, mm -hmm. They, Jerry wrote the pilot for Angie. It was called for Rosie. But, you know, this is a story I'm going to tell you at another time. Oh. Maybe when I come and see your class, which I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh, I love it. I love that. Well, yes. that's something yes. to look forward to. Ooh, um, yes. Besides the strip tease, of course. <laughs> Um, a famous cult film you did. Yes. Savage Streets. Uh oh, yes, 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 yes. Tell yes. us about that with Linda. I, with Linda Blair, of course. She and I did many, many prison women behind bars movies to get. We did Concrete Jungle, Savage Streets. Wait, there's more. Cage something about a cage anyway, uh, you know. And, uh, you know, I would take my father with me to the screenings of these movies. Now, I never took my clothes off in any of these movies, just so you know. I will only take my clothes off for Barbara Streisand <laughs> movies. But anyway, lots of the girls would, you know, ingenues behind bars. But I would be like the tough inmate i was sitting on the john smoking a joint looking at a lingerie thing and she stood on the toilet next to me and lowered a hook and got me and killed me in this one prison movie oh. now this this wasn't savage streets in savage streets i played the gym teacher breaking up fights girls in the locker room Listen, I would take my dad, and this is important for your kids to, I call them kids, your actors, to know, is that I'd take my father to these screenings with me. Now, my father was an actor, a well-known character actor. We can talk about him in a second. But yes. When I'd go to these movies and I'd see myself and I would go, oh, my goodness. He says, Carol, actors have to work. They have to pay their rent. They have to pay their bills. You're acting, you're acting, you're acting. Everybody has those bombs in their closet, those strange things they did. 
Well, and that's it. And some of those quote strange things are classic and wonderful. Classic I mean, I, cult movies. I love cult movies, classic midnight films. And you mentioned uh, somebody who <clears throat> I actually had the question. It was another like, okay, I'm going to throw this name out, but you brought him up, Mr. Jesse White. Yeah, this is from his heyday in Hollywood, let's say. Uh, maybe like this. Oh. He was, he started on Broadway. He worked in a play called Harvey about the invisible rabbit. Yeah. And they, when they decided to make it into a movie, they brought him out from Broadway. He made the movie. They put him under contract at Universal and the rest. And here I am. You know, let's see if I can find some gr great pictures. Uh, well, that's a question, too. You said, here yeah. I am. With, with your father being in the business, do you think it was a little easier for you or a little harder? Or, you know, I hear two different stories from different people. I'll tell you, here's where it's easy. Here's where it was easier. Because he was a professional, I got to s sort of see what's real and what's BS because hundreds of people are getting off the bus every day. I want to be an actor. I want to be an actor. And they get hooked into classes. They get hooked into come up to my hotel room. They get hooked into things that are not so kosher, let's say, not so, not so real. Mm -hmm. So I could, because of him, I'd know Love American style is not, uh, you know, some shady thing where you don't get paid. Also, a lot of times they want you to pay them oh, to no. be, you know, oh, I'll be your agent. Pay me this now. I want to show you. My dad was in a movie called Bedtime for Bonzo. Oh, my God. Yes. And here is... Here's Bonzo, I don't know, Bonzo, the, the monkey, Milton Berle, very young, and my dad. That was one of his very, very early, early jobs. And then he worked with Ann Southern on a, a TV show called Private Secretary. Actually, I'll tell you, he started in New York in TV the very first TV shows that were made in Kinescope. Um, and when he came out to Hollywood, then he was on not one series with Ann Southern, two. He was on Make Room for Daddy, playing Danny Thomas's original agent. And then after he, he worked with Marlo Thomas, he was on The Munsters. He, there wasn't a sh Columbo, there wasn't a show. And did you, get, movies. did you get to work with him? You know, I, I did. We did a, I don't know what to call it, for National Auto Parts. A, uh, it, we, we were flown to Las Vegas and we did a musical about auto parts. Um, and he was in it and I was in it. And uh, oh, I love that. Here's, here's a great picture oh laughing. yeah he was he was great but then after he did all these series stan freeberg the brilliant stan freeberg uh who worked for an ad agency creating he created the first funny commercials and my dad worked for him doing chunking chow mein commercials and from there, he got a call. Yeah. He was the original Maytag repairman on TV. <laughs> I don't know if you could see him, but old lonely because the Maytags never broke down, of course. Oh, my God. What is that book, by the way? It's a gorgeous book. One of my beautiful fans. Angela Farina and her sister Deborah 
they, the, the many faces of Jesse White. They sent it to me and they, when they came to town from New York, mm -hmm. uh, they gave it to me along with a beautiful, beautiful one of my mother. Oh, I, I, I so touched. Now my mom and dad met in a workshop in New York, but my dad said only one star in the family, Simi. And uh, so, so she she, she was a performer, but yes, she was a dancer and an actress. And uh, you know, in those days, um, it, the the man worked, and the woman raised, stayed home, and raised the children, and. We were fortunate, fortunate enough that she didn't have to work. Yeah. But she always Great. she would come in and do a high kick, and uh, I just pictured him when she was pissed. She would kick him. <laughs> well, uh, that's that's another story. <laughs> but uh, but hey, I've got to throw something at one thing. You said only one star in the family, but ultimately. There were more because you popped out and yes, and I, you know, I'll tell you my very first play I did was in Sunday school. Yeah, and I went to Sunday school with Richard Dreyfus. You've heard of him, Richard Dreyfus. Right. I went to high school with him and Sunday school, and my first play I played Luella the Latka. It was a it was a Hanukkah play. I love it. He was Thomas the Shamus. And Thomas I was the Shamus? Thomas the Shamus. You know, uh, the, he, and uh, we, we have been friends a long, long time. Uh, yeah. So, yes. tell me. Yes, sir. What is your joy? My joy. Oh, my joy is my sister's children and our first grandson, oh. my sister's first grandson, Artie. Artie is his name. And uh, he's a little bundle of baby joy, you know, <laughs> just learning to walk. They took him to the park. They live in Chicago. And he's walking in the grass. He just learned to walk in his bare feet yeah. and there's such wonderment in children it's so that is my joy plus as i say i've started to paint and yeah. it's calmed me through this period of pandemic et well, cetera i tell you you said um the kids at at the school and i feel i mean I, a lot of a lot of people call me uncle uh, so I get to be an uncle. Yeah, oh, I love it. It's, it's a joy. It, it is, joy. and you are so lucky to work with young artists. Well, amazing. I mean, that seriously, that is my joy. That is my joy. Uh, and, uh, two more questions I have. One yeah. is. Yes, I'm single. I'm single. <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> It's recorded. It's recorded. Let me yes. find the ring. <laughs> Let me find the ring. Oh, oh, my. Sorry, my oh I love your shorts. I don't have a ring, but I do have a heart. Oh. Next time I see you, I'm going to give you this heart. Heart of my heart. That's you, kid. That's <laughs> beautiful. And yes, yeah. yes, when? Uh, when, when? Um, we, we could fly to Vegas. We could drive to Vegas. Let's walk to Vegas. <laughs> Who gives a hoot? Oh, I'm so excited. Too bad I'm a little old for children, but. Well, my mother will be happy that I'm married at least. Exactly. So, <laughs> I can't wait to come and see your classes in person. Uh, I, I went to Meet the Biz once in the Valley. Yes. And had a 
blast. Oh, it was great. It was, people still talk about that class. Well, very good. Mm. And when I come to your class, maybe, you know, even if you're actors, singers, dancers, performers, just learn even five sentences for me. I would love to hear them act. You know, it's like, I'm sure, do they do monologues in your class? Oh, yes. Yes, in fact, they're working on a monologue now. And I said, it could be anywhere from one sentence. Good. A paragraph to Good. a page. There you go. Um, one, uh, you know, under about a minute monologue. Yes, yes. Oh, you are so lucky to work with young artists. I envy you. I envy you. I really do. And I just can't wait to get married. <laughs> well, you know, we'll just put that on the ring. And uh, we'll have to find somebody to hold my train. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I do have one question, one question. Do you like, do you prefer acting on stage? Because I've seen you on stage and you blow the roof off. You, you're like, even if the play is like, you walk into the room and <laughs> the energy oh. fills the room. Plays, movies, TV, what, what is your love? My greatest love is the theater. Oh my God. And I was lucky enough to do the play Harvey with French Stewart last summer at the Laguna Playhouse. Yes. Oh, the play that brought my father to Hollywood, in fact. Exactly. And then I came back and did another play at Gary Marshall's Theater. It fills me. You feel the audience. And I know your young actors, performers, know what I'm talking about when you move people you feel it it's a, it's so alive and if you forget a line which has happened to me once or twice the excitement of someone throwing you a cue and of course that's what i was talking about right right but i love the theater i love working in tv and movies because uh, they pay you. <laughs> Not that the equity plays, they also paid me. But um, yeah, contribute to my health insurance. And I like TV and movies too, because you meet many, many wonderful people. Uh, you get to work with fine actors. For yeah. them good material and I like it all but oh god I love the theater I love live performing and you know I started at the comedy store do you know that when the co the original comedy store first opened on the sunset strip right here right I was in the original improv group the comedy store players now was that before your tv or during that was at the it beginning. Was, it was before. It was 1972 when the Comedy Store opened. And Sammy Shore and his wife Mitzi owned it. And their son, Paulie, he was a little kid then, Paulie Shore. I'm sure you know Paulie Shore. Um, David Letterman worked out there. Jay Leno was a kid there. Every great comic. David Brenner, God rest his soul, just Daphne Davis, uh, and Mitzi, the co-owner, she'd say, Carol, do stand up, do stand up. I never did stand up. Maybe I did it once. Yeah. And I couldn't remember what I, my jokes. That's today. I still can't remember the story <laughs> or the punchline. So, you know, yeah. stand up wasn't for me, but I love doing improv. Mm. Ooh, baby. I worked with Harvey Lembeck's comedy workshop. One of my first teachers was Stella Adler. Charles Nelson Riley was oh. my teacher. You know, yeah, and 
never stop studying because we don't work every day and you want to stay fresh. Stay fresh. So keep studying, keep staying in classes. That's what I tell all actors, I, young actors I meet. Thank you, Carolina White. You are so welcome. Who knew I'd end up engaged? What <laughs> age, right? <laughs>